Hello, everyone. This is Ko Ishiyama, representative director and president of ExaWizards. Today, we'd like to provide you with a video of what we have been talking about in our roadshow when we went public. This video consists of a company explanation section and a question and answer section. We hope you will watch both. Let's start with the company explanation using our gross potential document. Our mission is solving social issues through artificial intelligence for future generations. I used to be a director of the AI research lab at Recruit Holdings, but I want to make a big impact by implementing AI in society, not just in research and development. And that's why we have set this mission at the ExoWizards. In terms of business segments, we have the AI platform business and the AI products business. And data and algorithms from both of these businesses are accumulated in our platform, Exabase. In the AI platform business, we are working on approximately 250 products annually, mainly for large Japanese enterprises, and the technological assets used in these projects are accumulated in Exabase, and they are highly reusable over time. Currently, the AI platform business accounts for 86% of our revenue, and Exabase is used to solve the problems of CXOs and large enterprises, so the scale of our projects are gradually becoming larger. In addition, when we're able to identify general purpose issues, we develop a SaaS-based business model as the AI products business, and this business accounts for 14% of our revenue. But please understand that the AI platform will be the driver of growth for the short to mid term. Here is an overview of our AI platform business. As I will explain from below, we currently have more than 50 strategy consultants, and they work as our in-house consultants to solve client CXO issues. Specifically, they work on high-level management issues such as how to improve the KPI set out in the medium to long-term plan, by when and to what extent, and the number of projects has been increased in the recent years. For example, we are steadily increasing the or expanding the scale of our projects to include projects worth several million dollars in a single year of multi-year contracts. The middle part is the mechanism that increases our gross profit margin. We have already applied for more than 120 patents and we are able to offer high pricing for an algorithm that only we can use and as a result, our gross profit margin will increase. In addition, 192 engineers are currently maintaining Exabase in a highly reusable form and this makes it possible to work on similar projects while keeping the overall utilization rate of our engineers low and increasing productivity. The top part is the mechanism that promotes continuous usage. We are not only providing AI algorithms, but we also have a strong UIUX team, so we can provide AI with UIUX as software that is easy to use in the field. Also, in 2021, we acquired a company called Xware to provide MLOps, or AKA Machine Learning Operations, which is the foundation for updating machine learning models on a daily basis while embedding it in our client systems. In this way, we can promote continuous use by providing an environment where the final users can run their own applications. And in this way, we are able to achieve high gross profit margins and retention rates. This is an explanation of the AI product business. As Japan's super Asian society progresses, there are issues such as increasing social security costs and decreasing working population. And we believe that new times are occurring in conjunction with these issues. We are developing a variety of AI products to address these issues, and this makes our business highly valuable from an ESG perspective, and I'll explain the specific products in other details later. Here are the KPI highlights. The key points of this page are the high revenue growth rate on the left and a high gross margin of 75% in the AI platform business in the middle. This slide shows segment performance of the AI platform segment. And as I mentioned earlier about the high revenue growth rate, we have reached 2.2 billion yen in revenues of last fiscal year, and we expect to reach around 4 billion yen in the fiscal year ending March 2022. In this graph, the dark blue area is the sales from long-term clients, which we define as clients who have used Exabase continuously for all of the previous four quarters. Then in the fiscal year ending March 2022, this percentage is expected to increase to over 60%. However, as we want to further grow our top line, we are willing to work in new use cases, and by doing so, 
we can raise the barriers to entry for acquisition of new IP and expand the scope of reusability with new components. As a result, we expect to see a steady increase in both long-term and new businesses. But in the meanwhile, by doing so, we expect the percentage of revenue from long-term clients could fluctuate because of new businesses. Next, I will explain the unit price per client in AI platform business. This graph shows the average revenue of the top 10 clients, and as of last fiscal year, we have already reached a level exceeding 100 million yen. In the previous slide, the revenue for the last fiscal year was 2.2 billion yen, which means that the top 10 clients account for about half of our total revenue. The unit price has been growing steadily, and the top client in terms of revenue was about 250 million yen in the previous fiscal year. But in the fiscal year ending March 2022, we are expecting to see multiple clients' revenues to be a 350 million to 500 million yen. So we are making steady progress in improving unit prices. These are the major sectors of our clients. One of the main characters of our company is that we are developing in multiple sectors, which is making us multi-sector. To explain this, for example, Alibaba in China started out as an e-commerce company and then grew into payments and lending by expanding its data horizontally. Data is disruptive and it can be used while moving from one sector to another. For example, we have accumulated a lot of useful data in the field of nursing care so we can propose the design of dementia insurance to the insurance industry, or for pharmaceutical companies, we can provide disease predictions based on the analysis data of, of walking videos for the prevention of the frail and develop an application for disease awareness. In this way, the strength of multi-sector business is to increase revenue while making good use of the effects of crossover. As the number of sectors increases, the number of crossovers will also increase, and we can believe that we can further develop our strengths in the medium to long term. The finance, insurance, and healthcare sectors account for a large percentage of our revenue, but this is due to the fact that these sectors are mature and digital transformation is progressing. For example, in the healthcare sector, the top 13 or so companies are all our clients. But on the other hand, there are sectors that are expected to grow in the future, such as the energy sector, where the team of the decarbonized society has been raised in recent years. Next, let me explain from the perspective of gross profit margin. There are consulting firms and domestic AI platform companies that have already achieved a certain level of success. But compared to the level of these companies, our gross profit margin was 75% as of last year, which is a high level. Global AI leaders such as C3AI and Padna have similar gross margin levels. However, our platform Exabase has been completed to a certain degree and we are proud of the fact that we are more complete than ordinary consulting firms and domestic AI ventures. As mentioned earlier, we will continue to strategically and proactively take on new projects and strengthen barriers to entry. So although gross profit margins could decline in the short term, we expect them to recover in the long term. Here are some specific use cases. First of all, in the case of Aflac shown on the left, as Aflac is promoting online sales through the COVID-19 disaster, the data that they acquire has increased in various ways. Aflac has about 1.4 trillion yen in premium income, so they are working to increase lifetime value by using the newly acquired data to shift to a data-driven sales behavior. 10% improvement would mean a return of 140 billion yen so we are working on a large project to achieve such a high level of success. At Daichi Sankyo, we provide data-driven drug discovery using deep learning to, pre to predict the quality of compounds. For example, at what temperature they will dissolve and what their toxicity will be. Data-driven drug discovery is an area where pharmaceutical companies are currently seeking to be most competitive and they're using our services in the R&D field uh, as well. We are also working with Hitachi Metals to solve problems in the area of factory automation. This is a use case where certain processes have to be checked by humans, but with our AI, robots can now be used for automation. Furthermore, in the case of SoftBank, we used our algorithm to make initial pass-fail decisions during a five-minute free-format video screening for new graduate recruitment interviews. Here, we are able to provide this service in an ethical or acceptable manner. 
and at this point, we have been able to achieve high accuracy in judgments similarly to those by humans, which means that we've been able to reduce overall work hours by 85%. On the far right, in the case of Yamato Holdings, we are providing them with cargo demand forecasting. As the cost structure of logistics had become more and more complex with the generalization of EC, by refining cargo demand forecasting, we can achieve a cost benefit of 9 billion yen by optimizing 1% of the 900 billion yen in labor costs. And according to our own calculations, this is an extremely high ROI theory. Furthermore, for Yamato Holdings, we not have only developed the algorithm but also the MLOps part as well, which is the foundation for improving the accuracy on a daily basis in the field making them as our ongoing continuous client. Next, I will explain the mechanism of expanding cross-selling. On the left, for example, if we start with demand forecasting, there are many use cases in other fields where we can upsell like, how about optimizing sales and marketing, or how about optimization in human resources. By upselling to individual companies using multiple use cases, we can increase the unit price per client. On the right is a diagram showing horizontal development within the industry. First, I mentioned that our intellectual property will be accumulated in Exabase. In Japan, the Intellectual Property Office of the Cabinet Office has created a soft law that requires trained models and algorithms to belong to AI venture companies as a guideline for transactions between AI venture companies and large enterprises. And actually, the lawyer who was in charge of developing the guidelines is now working in our legal department and we are concluding contracts with clients in, ac in accordance with the guidelines. This makes it possible for us to use the algorithms from completed projects in a wide range of other companies. Let's go back to section 1 and I'll explain the image of TAM. While the AI market itself continues to expand at a high growth rate, there are many companies in Japan that have not yet adopted AI, so about 70%, and we believe that this is a large white space. One of the reasons for the low adoption rate of AI in Japan is that the amount of IT investment in Japan is low compared to the US. In Japan, the ratio of engineers in the company is low and there is a strong dependence on external development. For example, in the US, if Google creates a machine learning API and releases it to the public, there are engineers on the user company side who can receive and apply it. But in Japan, there are almost no such engineers, so the work is outsourced to IT vendors. IT vendors are good at maintenance and the upkeep of existing systems, but they don't focus on improving KPIs and performance like we do. Which means that AI utilization, DX, and data-driven management will not progress forever. In such an environment, the timing is right for companies to replace traditional IT budgets with more strategic, performance-based IT investments. And, as shown in the case of Yamato, we are living in an area where our legacy business is not sustainable unless we work hard on DX. In the midst of these trends, the replacement of traditional IT spending with strategic IT investments on the way, and the percentage of corporate IT investment is expected to double. This time slide is the key chart. We consider the time of the AI platform business to be 4 trillion yen. The horizontal axis is the number of clients, and we define the top 1,000 companies by market capitalization in Japan as our client base. Currently, 80% of the top 10 companies by market cap, 55% of the top 100 companies, and 15% of the top 1,000 companies are all our clients, and we are steadily expanding our client base on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis of the graph shows the unit price per client. I mentioned earlier that this fiscal year there will be several projects in the range of 300 to 500 million yen, but I believe we will eventually be able to get a budget of around 4 billion yen per company, and this is used as the calculation as TAM. The average IT budget of the top 1,000 largest companies in Japan is said to be about 2% of our revenue and we estimate that 30% of that IT budget will be used for strategic IT investment, which would lead to 4 billion yen per client. Our company has also established a method to generate revenue of up to 500 million yen per company, with a re revenue of 2.3 billion yen in the last fiscal year, and 4 billion yen in the, in the fiscal year ending March 2022. We would maintain this revenue growth rate while further developing 4 trillion yen tap. One of the reasons why we are able to gain market share is that each vendor provides a specific function to solve CXO issues. While we have all the capabilities to tackle CXO issues in an integrated manner and improve KPIs in a performance-oriented manner. 
で定期案の配分に取り組めるというところが必要となります。The key point of differentiation is that while other companies use functional delivery, we use result delivery. This is the AI platform's business so far. Next, I would like to explain the AI product business. In Japan, as I mentioned earlier, TAM is an emerging result、uh, of factors such as increasing social security costs due to the decline in birth rate in Asian society and the decline in working population. For example, it is said that there will be a shortage of 14 million people in the workforce by 2014. So, it is necessary to switch to AI. If we consider the labor force that will be replaced by AI in terms of labor costs, we believe that time will be very large. Another issue is the increase in social security costs, with 10 trillion yen in social security costs. If our AI can improve the efficiency of nursing care operations by 20%, we can expect to generate 2 trillion yen in time. On the left is a DX product that addresses the decline in workforce. I used to be the deputy director of the government's HR task force on the development of AI skilled labor. One of the issues we faced was that we didn't know how many DX talents were in a company. So, to address this issue, we developed a service to assess digital talent as a kind of aptitude test to find DX talent, and this service is now currently being used by over 350 companies. Next on the right is a social AI product. We are developing and providing SaaS products for nursing care. For example, Hanasuto is a SaaS application that allows staff at a nursing home to say, Mr. Ishiyama's all breakfast intake is complete, and the data is structured and automatically reflected in the nursing home medical record. The Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare will establish a database called LIFE for scientific nursing care from 2021 and is requesting nursing homes to input data while providing support measures such as providing subsidies to nursing homes for input data. However, in nursing care facilities, It is sometimes difficult to input data into LIFE using a tablet because of dirty hands from changing diapers. That's why we provide a voice input application, which is very useful. We hold the patent for voice input technology used in nursing home care homes, and the alliance is expanding between us and nursing care cartel companies. The care cartel company shown here, Care Connect Japan, is selling our product, Hansuto, by the way, which means just by talking, as a distributor. And we have a relationship with 12,000 care facilities. And we believe this alliance will expand step by step in the future. The revenue trend of AI products business is shown as follows The dark blue area shows DX AI products, which are growing steadily because they overlap with the AI platform business in terms of client base. Next, revenue of SaaS applications for nursing care as social AI products is also increasing. There is a great synergy between AI products business and the AI platform business. For example, there is a pattern where a client uses the DX AI products for HR assessment service, and after a certain level of training for DX has been achieved, the next step is to convert the client into a client for the AI platform business in order to actually solve the matching issue. On the other hand, there are times where we can sell our products to clients who are using our AI platform. For example, we have a partnership with Parcel. One of the largest staffing companies in Japan, and they sell our assessment products to SMBs as a distributor, effectively. In addition, there are synergies between nursing care products. On the right is Hanasto, which means just by talking, for nursing homes, and on the left is Toruto, which means just by taking a movie for home care. For Toruto, we've established a joint venture with Yamashita, which has the largest market share for welfare beds for home care. By making appropriate secondary use of the data obtained from nursing homes and home care facilities, we will be able to create a synergy between the AI platform business. In the AI platform business, we have insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies as our six important clients. So we can expect a synergy that is able to create a business that makes good use of our data and customer contact points by adding another year layer of revenue to this SaaS application. From this perspective shown on the page, the AI products business is a product that makes high contribution to ESG. Let me explain the company wide part. It is also important to note that our company is multi sector and that we are capable of multi modal technology as we are growing horizontally. For example, in the case of SoftBank, we analyze the image of a five minute interview video, and if there's a resume, we also analyze this as structured data. The content of the interview is converted into text data from speech to text, which is then processed via NLP. Only by working in a multi modal manner, combining multiple algorithms for multiple data types, can we provide a high judgment accuracy. This multimodal tech approach is one of the strengths of Exabusiness.
We assume that we're the only multimodal, multi-sector AI company in Japan and believe that the way we create our business is different from other companies. We've applied for 124 patents and we've been granted 55 patents and we already have a large number of patent libraries as well. In addition, among various assets, we have accumulated intellectual property that can be controlled in a way that is linked to hardware, such as the robot on the left and the edge camera on the right, which is also a differentiating factor. I would like to introduce the board members. Aside from myself, one of the strengths of our management team is that we have members with a wealth of experience in listed companies, such as Harata san, the chairman, who is a former che chairman of DNA, and Shingai san, the asset director, who is a former vice president of JT. Next to him, Sakane san is the CTO but he's also an ex-faculty member of Shizuoka University. I am actually a visiting associate professor at the University of Tokyo, and there are several other members at this associate professor level, as well as former CTOs of venture companies and engineers who have sold their founding companies to Google. So you can think of us like a CTO United organization. Oe-san is originally from the Boston Consulting Group, and Hideo-san is the former chairman of Bain & Company, and they are managing our consulting team. In addition, Nagashima-san, ex-global co-head of Roland Berger, is also an advisor to us, so you can see we have a high level in terms of consulting team management. Munikata-san on the bottom right is a former commissioner of the Japan Patent Office and has been working with us on our intellectual property strategy. Our employees, as the name of this implies, are a diverse group of people who are here to provide one-stop solutions. Many AI ventures in Japan are 80% made up of AI engineers, but in our case, it's only about 50%. And the rest of it is a wide range of people such as strategic consultants, designers, product managers, and domain experts. Thirty percent of our engineers are foreign nationals. And since we hire globally, we do not club up the hiring throughput, which is another strength of our hiring capability. This is the funnel for hiring engineers. For the past two years, over 5,000 people applied, 1,600 people were interviewed, and 103 people were selectively hired. We have been ranked in the top level of LinkedIn's top startups ranking for, for three consecutive years, and we believe that we are recognized as the most competitive startup in Japan for hiring. The last section is the growth strategy. As a KPI for the AI platform business, we are focusing on the revenue growth rate. The business has been growing at a cargo of 70% over the past three years, and we will continue to expand the business by monitoring revenue per customer, revenue of long-term clients, and gross profit margin levels, while maintaining a growth rate from 2 billion yen in the previous fiscal year to 4 billion yen in this fiscal year, and 30 to 50% revenue growth rate up the up. On the other hand, in the AI products business, we will also focus on the revenue growth rate, but in the short to medium term, as the AI platform business makes strong inbound inquiries we would like to achieve growth in the AI products business for the long-term perspective. I would like to explain the past and future of our AI platform business. On the left is the image of the past three years in which we have been working to strengthen Exabase's technology assets in a multi-sector, multi-modal manner by handling many tailor-made projects and charging high unit price FTEs. In the middle is the current initiative and we are starting to shift our business model using the assets we have accumulated so far. In addition to the high unit price FTE billing, we are charging for the use of the Exabase platform, which has become highly functional due to our community technology. The figure on the right is our future vision. Exabase to maximize the scope of automation, and we would like to develop a no-code AI platform that can be used in the industry or function. In addition to initial installation costs, the use of the platform will be charged. However, as the platform usage requires client enterprise to be reasonably sophisticated as well, we envision it to be a hybrid model of providing this platform usage fee for a sophisticated enterprise while providing some sort of professional FTE based in pricing model to legacy enterprise that requires a certain amount of support by laborers. We hope to evolve into a more efficient business model in the future, enabling us to grow with scale unlinked to the, to the headcount we've invested in. This concludes my presentation on the company. There is also a question and answer section, so if you'd like to watch that as well, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching.
First, let's talk about the composition of our employees. In most AI startup companies, about 80% of the employees are engineers. In our company, not only engineers, but also experts in various domains such as strategic consulting, UI UX designing, caregiving, and nursing have come together to create a system that allows us to implement AI in society in an innovative manner. In addition, 30-40% of uh, the engineering team is foreign nationals, so we have a system to gather global knowledge. Next, we are accumulating technology and intellectual property for a wide range of industries. Many AI startups focus on specific industry verticals and technology areas, such as language processing and image processing to provide services. On the other hand, we have accumulated technologies and intellectual property based on our experience of an over 250 AI projects per year from a wide variety of industry verticals and of various technology areas. We call this multi-sector, multi-modal strategy and position ourselves in a unique place in the industry. As a result, we are able to handle highly complex issues by combining multiple technologies, which enables us to provide AI implementations that are more effective when implemented in the field. Next, let's look at the challenges we are addressing. Many AI startups focus on a specific problem area or part of the value chain. At our company, we have a system in place that enables us to provide full stack services for CXO level management issues company-wide issues with large budgets, and company-wide DX. Furthermore, by accumulating the know-how and algorithms acquired in these projects in Exabase, we can utilize them in the next new project and effectively formulate projects. Due to the low ratio of in-house engineers in Japanese companies and the level of IT proficiency of the management, I believe that even if Japanese companies are provided with a US-style AI platform, they do not have the system in place to use it as their own. In addition, for Japanese companies that require a certain level of in-house production and customization, it is difficult to accept the use of foreign AI platforms that are often rigid in many cases. In the first place, the introduction of AI requires the development of an organizational structure and the training of AI personnel. So it's important for service providers to understand not only their customers, but also their culture. At present, we do not believe that we have any direct competitors. First of all, as I mentioned in question one, there are significant differences between us and other AI startups in terms of the issues we are tackling, the scope of services we provide, and the technological domains. For this reason, we are not in direct competition with them. In terms of the difference with strategic consulting companies, they provide KPIs and growth plan documents as deliverables through their consulting services. When it comes to the actual development of AI, they tend to outsource the work. The difference between SIR is that they are a subcontractor for a client company. So the main focus of the service is to send onshore, offshore labors, so to speak. For this reason, although they may perform the prescribed maintenance and development, they may not be good at improving the management KPIs by utilizing or using the latest AI technology and IPs based on their understanding of management strategy and the client's business. With this differentiated position, we believe that we have no competitors. By combining our experience in a wide range of industries and various technological elements, we are able to involve not only engineers but also UX designers and domain experts by incorporating this perspective of strategic consulting. And also we are able to provide AI implementations that are easy to use in the field and can be used continuously. To begin with, the social and management issues that we are tackling are not issues that can be solved by the strength of a single AI technology alone. Our strength lies in the ability to solve problems by integrating multiple data sources for communication between CXOs and various departments. And based on our experience in implementing various technologies in a wide range of industries, this is what we describe as multi-sector and multi-modal. Japanese companies do not have much experience in hiring large numbers of engineers. On the other hand, 
We have a lot of people in experience in hiring large numbers of engineers, including former Indeed, Medicare, and Sony human resource managers. So our strength lies in the fact that our hiring methods are already standardized. On the other hand, engineers also enjoy the fact that they can contribute to the real world through robotics and drug discovery and so on, rather than being confined to a specific domain such as e-commerce or gaming. In this respect, our company is able to utilize data and accumulated algorithms from various industries, and since the products we work on are varied, we are able to provide work that satisfies intellectual curiosity. In this way, we are able to attract excellent engineers, and since there is a structure in which great people attract great people, there is a good cycle that attracts even more talent. We plan to continue hiring double-digit numbers of personnel per year as our business progresses. We are making good progress at the moment, and we are being ranked among the top startups on LinkedIn for three consecutive years and believe that we are recognized as the most competitive startup in Japan for hiring. In addition, since we went public, our brand recognition has improved, and I think the hiring environment has also become more favorable for us. In the short term, we expect that the increase in unit price per client in the AI platform business and the increase in new clients will drive revenue growth on a consolidated basis. To this end, we will focus on acquiring new projects by working on single clients, other business segment, by finding similar projects at other companies in the industry. In the medium to long term, the growth of the AI products business is expected to accelerate as the population decline and aging of the Japanese society accelerates. We would like to expand our business by responding to the decline in the working population through DX AI products and to the Asian society with social AI products. In our case, by working on a variety of projects in multiple sectors, we will accumulate highly reasonable algorithms, new functional components, and use cases in our exhibits. With Exabase, we expect to be able to execute similar projects more efficiently, with fewer people and less time spent. And as a result, we believe that we are not at risk of future growth by being affected by the progress of new talent acquisition. In order to further strengthen this advantage, we will accelerate the acquisition of new projects in new sectors and technological fields to further enhance the sophistication of Exabase. Thank you very much for watching.